All right, um, day eight review. We went from uh, Nahara and we had an extra long day uh, because we wanted to um, get a little extra mileage. So instead of stopping in Santo Domingo, like most people do, we went an extra six miles today and went to uh, Redesilla and it was a cool day. So, um, I just remember that morning we were, we had uh, one of the guys, one of the hospitaleros, one of the workers at the albergue or the hospital, hostel was kind of a Sam Elliott lookalike, men was saying. Yeah. So, and it was really cool um, just seeing him. There was a French family there, a very young French family, a wife, a sister, and a boy, seven, that were doing the Camino. And he was just really cute with the little boy and everything. It was, it was fun. But he, I remember it was really cool too because when he's he's from Oregon and he was really worried. We were talking that morning before we left, early that morning. He asked us to pray for rain for the West Coast because his family lives out west and they've been having a hard time with uh, no rain. So that was kind of cool. So then we got on the road. We walked pretty quick. We met up with our friend Philip from Germany, who's 19. I think we talked about that before. Yeah. And. Um, Anyways, uh, we walked with him for a little while, and then we stopped and we had breakfast at a golf at a course. golf course. Yeah, and again, it was another really good batch of ham and eggs. That's like our theme for breakfast, and it's we just get one plate that one was and split it. One of the better ones we oh had man, too. the yolks were so good. The eggs they did them sunny side up. The edges around the whites were crispy, but the bottoms weren't burnt, and the potatoes were really good. They had like mm -hmm. steak fried potatoes and it, they were awesome. So then we got back on the road, made quick time to the next town after that, uh, where we saw three horsemen that are also riding the Camino, but they started from like way far away. They're like already 500 miles into their ride. So that was kind of cool. We stopped and got a fresh squeezed orange juice at this one bar that, um, and most of the places where you stop during the day are, that's what they are, they're bars. So they have restaurants, but restaurants like open for breakfast and they might be open from like six to nine or something like that for breakfast and then they close and they won't open again till like seven at night. Some of them will open later in the morning, but it's crazy. So the only thing that's open during the day are these bars. So you can stop, get a drink, they'll all have little small things to eat like bocadillos, little Spanish sandwiches and stuff like that. So we stopped at this bar, we got a fresh squeeze, glass of orange juice and a couple of Coke Zeros that we split. And that, um, I remember that hitting the spot and then we got into Santo Domingo and we met a new friend, Chris, from Switzerland. Yeah, do you have a bubble in your throat? No, do I sound funny? Yes. <clears throat> Is that better? Mm -hmm. Okay. We met Chris, uh, sat down, had a, a drink with him, Coke Zeros for us, a beer for Chris. Um, uh, went to the. Which they're about the same price, anyways. They were the same price, it was hilarious. Um, and in some places, the alcoholic drinks are, are like half the price of, of a Coke Zero. It's hilarious. But we went into a, a, a hiking shop, got many a hat. And then we had our long six-mile hike from Santo Domingo in the late afternoon. It was hot. We were tired. Uh, we got to this albergue where we met Jose Manuel, a little bit different guy, but a really good host. He took really good care of us. And Redesilla del Camino is the name of the town where we stayed. There is like just over 100 people there. It is tiny. Mm -hmm. It was so tiny. And there was nothing open except for the albergue. So we thought we'd get some food or something like that. But instead, we did the pilgrim meal. Most albergues have like a meal that they'll serve for their pilgrims. And so we did that because there was no other place to get food. So, um, and we met Francois from... Mm -hmm. Uh, Netherlands. From but he Canada. lives yeah he's originally from Canada from French Canada and then he moved to the Netherlands and he's doing it he was in the same room with uh, Stefan from Belgium we met Michelle from South Korea we were all in the same room and then our friends from Taiwan um, uh, Vincent Dafe and Ben showed up to the same one again so they pushed hard that day too they got in really late but so we all had dinner together really good time it was our first pilgrim dinner and it, we, we had just it was good it was good getting to know each other there was a little bit of tense conversation yeah. for a minute at the dinner table Please. a couple Please of europeans said he was vegetarian yeah. because we needed to make drastic changes for the environment and yeah. stefan i don't think took that very no. well 
And it, it, not that he had to, like, Francois just kind of put it out there, and then, uh, yeah, Stefan took it. And, <laughs> he took the bait and ran. And it was <laughs> so weird. <laughs> it got tense for a while. And that's not the first time. It, we were surprised. It's like, um, yeah, with the environmental global warming type issues, we... It, um, people from Europe don't always agree on that one either. So it was we've had we've heard we've been witness to some tense conversations about it. Interestingly enough, but anyways, um, things mellowed out. We had a nice dinner. We went out for a walk later, hoping that the one bar in town would be open, um, so we could get a drink. But no such luck. We looked around for a vending machine so we could get. And when I say a drink, we want a Coke Zero. That's our. That's our. No, we want a drink. Yeah. Anyways, we looked for a vending machine, couldn't find one, but there was a medical vending machine in town. That was the only vending machine. It had knee braces, ankle braces, tape, um, uh, creams, fancy creams and lotions. Anyways, our friend Dafe wanted to get this blister cream, and he put four euros in to get this blister cream, and we just watched the rings that put, usually push items out of the vending machine. It wasn't made for... It was just a no. vending machine that somebody had put in medical supplies. It wasn't supposed to be a medical... So I doubt any of that stuff would have really fallen out because there was tons of weird-shaped things yeah. and I think that they would have fallen out. And so the rings just start spinning, and we can see them just spinning right around the little container of, of cream or lotion that you wanted to buy. And it and then it stopped spinning, you know, and it and it didn't even hardly move. And we all looked at each other like, oh my gosh. And like two seconds later, we just all started busting up laughing. Like it was so, it, it was a funny moment. But then um, after that, we were walking back to the albergue. We ran into um, three older Spanish people, uh, a husband, a wife, and, a, and the sister of the wife. And we asked them if there was either a bar or a, a vending machine and they said no but your your albergue should have one um but anyways we got to talking to them for about 15 or 20 minutes or whatever and then i said well we're gonna go to bed and we went into the albergue and and, and our host jose manuel was coming out and i asked him if they had a, a vending machine he's like, oh years ago we did but we don't anymore and then um so the the people out there eugenio and Armenia and well, she goes by Minnie. So she goes by Minnie. Yeah, we met another Minnie. So well, they they came out and they asked me if I wanted Coke or something else. And I was like, oh, I like Coke. And then they came out with two Coke Zeros for us. And then they ended up inviting us into their house, which was yeah. also a family museum. Because their yeah. family had lived in Redesia for a long time. Many generations. generations. And were farmers. So I had all this cool stuff that over the, like, there was eight kids in their family, seven sisters, one brother. And they all, they had like a high chair that they all used. There was like stuff for the ox and the horses and all the farming equipment. And it was really set up really nicely. I mean, it was the way they had it all hung on this one wall of the house and they knew all the stories. And we probably visited for like another hour mm -hmm. inside their house and just had a wonderful time visiting with these people. I, it was it was just a really, really nice. cool experience. And I yeah. practiced my Spanish with them. And Min, yeah, I don't I think Minnie got to speak more Spanish there than and they were really patient cuz they knew she they was learning and they were teaching her. It was so it was just a it was a special experience. It was they were really just wonderful people and they were they treated us so so well. It was one of the cooler experiences we've had on the Camino. And then we went to bed and That's it. That is it, and uh, it was late, so we went straight to bed. That's why we're recording it, not on the same day, but day 10 was, um, it was a good day. Mm -hmm. Not day 10, that sorry, day eight. eight. Day eight was a good day. I, my brain is all over the place. Anyways, so yeah, day eight, um, Najera to Redesilla del Camino. That's a wrap.